Now that you've heard all about different kinds of earthquakes and seismic waves, let's have a further look at what this means for buildings and foundations. In this lecture, we will discuss the behavior of foundations under seismic loading and introduce you to some more advanced topics such as soil structure interaction. All structures must sit on a foundation, be it shallow or deep. The overall response of a structure under gravity, especially earthquake loading, depends on the stiffness and strength of the soil. Generally, foundations need to be larger and deeper in softer soils. Simply speaking, the aim of the foundation is to, is to transfer structural forces into the competent ground. The selection and design of suitable foundations in the Netherlands and in the Groningen region in particular is important because of the deep and relatively soft soils that underlay much of the area. If we consider the performance of foundations in previous earthquakes, generally foundations have shown acceptable response unless there has been a temporary but dramatic loss of strength within the soil due to the phenomenon known as liquefaction, or there has been a global slope movement or failure, or there has been a fault passing through the structural footprint. Such dramatic damage that has been observed in large earthquakes across the world, like these photos of Mexico and Japan, is not to be expected in the Netherlands, but checks still need to be made. In particular, the presence of levees and canals are specific features that require attention because they influence the response of nearby structures. Seismic design standards such as Eurocode 8 and NPR 9998 require assessment of geotechnical hazards. In general, a structure should not be located where such phenomena are expected to occur. Foundations surrounded by strong and stiff soil, in other words, competent ground, should be capable of resisting an earthquake while experiencing small deformations. This generally leads to a stiff foundation subsystem that usually has an insignificant impact on the overall dynamic response of the structure. This is why the influence of soil is typically ignored for the design of the structure sitting on top. Foundations in competent soil are often analyzed and designed using a simple model that assumes a rigid foundation response. Where soft soils are present, the interaction between the soil, foundation, and structure all influence each other and should be considered in the assessment and design of a structure. This effect is known as soil structure interaction, or SSI, and explicitly looks at how the gravity and earthquake loads are transferred back and forth from the structure to the foundation system and back into the soil. You might wonder whether the vibrations that are generated at the rock mass at the earthquake location are the same as those experienced at the surface. For rock sites or on very stiff and strong soil, the differences are negligible. But when the earthquake waves propagate through softer soil, this influences the vibrations and ultimately the accelerations experienced by the structures on the surface. Additionally, due to SSI, the response of the soil affects the response of the structure, and the response of the structure affects the response of the soil. With the soil characteristics at a particular site in mind, the designer of the structure can use the seismic design code to make an assessment of these effects. Once we understand the amplitude of earthquake loading, the type and size of foundation required can be assessed. Special attention needs to be given to the design of foundations as they will not be readily available for inspection after an earthquake. For a shallow foundation, it is important to calculate the resistance of the foundation to sliding, global overturning, exceeding the soil bearing capacity, and the structural failure of the foundation. 
for pile foundations, it is important to check that the foundation system does not settle excessively and that the piles are structurally robust against both vertical and horizontal loads. In other words, the piles do not break. Throughout this design process, it is important that the work be carried out in conjunction between geotechnical and structural engineers. In this lecture, we looked at the behavior of foundations under seismic loading and specifically we have seen the difference between shallow and deep foundations. We have learned typical failure modes for each foundation type that need to be checked in design. Finally, we have been introduced to more advanced topics in geotechnical seismic engineering which provide more accurate estimates of how the soil, structure, and its foundation interact with each other in the overall seismic response of a building. Thank you.